<laughs> Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Over there, we got John Lewandowski. Hey. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Tarrant Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Um, as of right now, think I'll fit you for all your hockey needs for, uh, what is that, the Summer League coming up. Yes, folks, summer's coming. And there's yeah. still hockey. You got Summer League. So those of you that play beer league, summer leagues, hockey locker, get your gear. Um, fans, if you're looking to restock up over the summer for new gear to show off at the, at the uh, Panther Arena, for those of you in Milwaukee, hockey locker. And if you want to be a referee, not that I would, but hockey locker. <laughs> um, anyway, before we get into today's show, I want to do a little stick salute to um, Patrick Marlowe, broke Gordie Howe's record. Most NHL games played, you have to have one healthy career to do that. Yeah, huge milestone. Congratulations to him. His record was like Gretzky's goal record, which, eh, needless to say, is being hunted. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, today the Nashville Predators took on the Chicago Blackhawks. The Nashville Predators are 4-0 going into this game. Um, but before we get into that also, happy birthday, Yusuf Saros. Yep, happy birthday, Yusuf. So, stat line. Shots were 32-30, Chicago. Um, Nashville was 52 to 48, so face off was pretty even. Uh, Chicago yeah. did go one for five on the power play, but Nashville went 0 for five, but without Forsberg or, or Tolvin in to right. kind of spark plug that, which is their main two that have power play goals, that kind of makes it a little difficult. Um, yeah. Pims, Nashville, ouch. Um, 20 to 10. Uh, yeah. I'll see what caused that in a minute. Anyway, uh, hits were 22 to 19 uh, in, in favor of the Blackhawks. Uh, sh shot blocks were 16 to 10 Nashville. Giveaways were 12 to 9 Nashville. I don't know what the takeaways are, but I'm pretty sure John will uh, 7 3 Nashville. <laughs> All right, so Nashville did better at taking the puck away. Uh, shots in the first period were nine to eight. Uh, Nashville second period were uh, fourteen to eleven. Uh, Chicago and ten ten apiece in the third. Um, that being said, let's get into some of the scoring here. Scoring in the first goal of the game is Matt Duchesne with his fourth. Well, as me and John discussed earlier in the day. Duchesne has to do something right now, or Nashville's not going to protect him. Yeah. And that's needless to say, they have two $8 million contracts that they would probably love to get out from under. Um, so with the uh, with the assist was uh, Eric Halla, his 10th, and Matt Benning, his third. Um, that's going for the Blackhawks on the power play. Who else but Alex DeBrickett? Um, DeBrickett scored his 23rd with an assist from Pius, Pius Suter, his ninth, and Kane, his 42nd. Um, then in the second period, Kelly Yarncroft scored his 12th um, with an assist from uh, Mikael Granlin, his ninth, and Kunin, his not, or Granlin, his eighth, Kunin, his ninth. Um, that being said, it was actually kind of funny how Duchesne's goal was scored because Benning shot the puck, Halla deflected it, then Duchesne deflected it. Halla thought he scored, Duchesne thought he scored, and Benning's just sitting there watching them both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Um, 
Then scoring also in the second was Matthias Ekholm, his sixth, with an assist from Ryan Johansson, his twelfth. Another thing, Johansson's been stepping up his game lately, so Duchesne really has to, or they're going to protect Johansson. Right. Johansson has been electric lately. And uh, then scoring for the Blackhawks was David Camp, uh, his first with an assist from Gaudet. But I jumped out my chair again. It was, who do you know? What do you know? Tanner Janelle. Um, His second goal of the year was an assist from Ryan Ellis. Good to see Ellis back on the stat sheet. That was 23 yep. seconds into the third. Um, and then 41 seconds into the third, Luke Coonan, his fifth, with an assist from Granlin, his ninth now, and Young Crocs' tenth. So Young Crocs got 22 points. In that, to start the game for the Blackhawks was former Rockford Icehawk starter last year, Kevin Lankinen, his 17 of 22. He saved 17 to 22 with a point seven seven three save percentage. Oof. Malcolm Subban stopped all eight shots against him. Uh, in that for Nashville was the birthday boy, Eustace Saros. Saros stopped 30 of 32 with a point nine three eight. If this man does not at least get one Vesna vote <laughs> for his play since returning right. from injury, I will be upset. Yep. All right. Uh, your referees were Francois St. Laurent and Chris Lee. Uh, linesman was Andrew Smith and Julian Fournier. Head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks, former Rockford Icehawks head coach Jimmy Collinson. Uh, head coach for Nashville is former uh, U.S. Development head coach John Hines. Scratches for Chicago is Adam Boquist, Brendan Hagel, Ian Mitchell, Colin Delia, Mike Hardman. Scratches for Nashville, David Ferentz, Illy Tolvanen, Dante Favreau, and Jeremy Davies. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, Illy Tobin and Forsberg should be back by end of week. That's all. Uh, all right, three stars of the game. I was hearing that it was Sorrow says the third star of the game, but according to NHL.com, it is third star of the game is Tanner Janot. First star of the game is Mikel Granlin. Or second star of the game is Mikel Granlin. First star of the game, Luke Cunnan. Uh, let's see. Jano had one goal. Kuhn had a goal and an assist. Granlin had two assists. I think Sarles should have been the third star. No offense to Tanner Jano. Yeah. yeah. But if there's a proverbial four star, eh, Sarles, you can be it. All righty. Uh, just looking at the standings real quick before we go. Um, Nashville now has a three-point lead over Chicago. Or a three-point lead over uh, Dallas. And a five-point lead. Four-point lead over Chicago. Now, as long as you can pull a win out of uh, out of one more game against Chicago, you should pretty much wrap up their season. Right. Playoff hunt. Uh, uh, hang on a second. I'm going to take a look right quick at Nashville's schedule remaining to see if we can do any more damage to Chicago. Or, well, not Chicago, but Dallas, because that's going to be the big one. We got to right. win against Dallas if we can. All righty. We play Chicago, then Florida. And then we play Dallas on the 1st of, of May, May. 
what am I thinking? March. I'm so used to the season wrapping up and right. towards the end of March. Uh, towards uh, at the beginning of May, then we play. Oh, well, we got two games against Columbus, and then we had to wrap up our season against Carolina. Hopefully, we can come out of Carolina with a point, but right. Uh, Hopefully, we can take the two. I mean, we haven't won versus Carolina all year. Never a better time to get two wins against them. Yeah, I mean, go into the playoffs strong. I mean, at least we did score right against them, and we made. A slight improvement from game one to game two. Maybe we can go into their next game against them and, you know, they can play against us 2-1, and then we win against them 2-1, and, right. you know, oh, we win one nothing, you know, something like that. You know, we can hope for a win. Right. Um, OT, preferably, if you're going to lose. That point even though Carolina will be in at this point. Um, I don't know if anybody has clinched yet to my recollection that I saw that is a no. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. But I would not be surprised. All righty. Um, well, Vegas and Colorado pretty much got that wrapped up. Um, Carolina, Florida, Tampa Bay, they're pretty much in. in. Washington's pretty much in. I mean, unless you see a monumental collapse. Right. They're in. Um, Toronto, same thing. If, unless there's a monumental collapse by them, they're in. That includes Montreal, because those guys have all been. Yeah. If you got a six point lead right now, you're good. Right. It, it's getting down to that wire where uh, Carolina did lose an OT to Tampa. Uh, Florida beat Columbus. Uh, Dallas wanted a shootout and we beat Chicago. Uh, games on the docket for tomorrow. They. The Red Wings play Dallas, so if you want to scoreboard watch, that's probably the game that's going to be on my TV tomorrow. Because that's the one I'm paying attention to. Right. Um, and then Nashville plays Chicago on NBCSN. So no Nashville Predators. Uh, Coverage for those of you who watch on uh, on uh, NHL TV, you're unable to watch the uh, broadcast. So if you have uh, cable and BCSN, um, that is a really big game because if Nashville comes out of that with a win as well, you can pretty much count the Blackhawks out of catching them because then you just gave yourself a four-point lead over them. Right. On top of whatever you had going into it. Now, Nashville only plays Dallas once. So if we could come out of that with the two points, that right. wrap that up for us. So, and as long as we can come out of Florida with a point, um, looking at the Standings right now, Carolina six, two, and two, Florida's three, one, and one, um, Tampa's six and four, Nashville six and four, Dallas is six, two, and two. I mean, uh, Chicago's five and five, Detroit's four and four, three and three, and Columbus is one, eight, and one. Wait a minute. Wait a tick. Buffalo's three, two, uh, or five, three, and two in their last five, in their last ten. It looks like the bottom dweller, if it keeps going the way it is, Columbus is going to be getting the bottom end of the heat there. Okay. Um, well, unless Anaheim don't pick it up, but they're lost two straight. Uh, Columbus has lost three straight, Buffalo's 1-1, one, one, and Ottawa's 1-1. One, one. So, I mean, it's all coming down to how the bottom guys go. Um, right. 
You can only jump 10 spots in the draft. We got the expansion draft coming up. Everybody's panicking about that. Uh, Nashville's goal differential did drop by three. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. What happens going in, like I said, uh, Dallas plays uh, Detroit. I'm actually going to quickly take a look at Dallas's schedule because of COVID and then the weather issue. Their schedule's got to look really hectic. Because as much as it pains me, schedule plays a big part. Yeah. All right. So they got three. <laughs> they got two at home against the Red Wings, which they played one of them today. Then they got two in Detroit. Then they got two in Carolina, one against Tampa Bay in Tampa. Uh, then they go to Nashville for a game, then back to Florida, Tampa, Tampa, Chicago to wrap it all up. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's what it's looking like. So, with that being said, I mean, Nashville's kind of got an easier schedule. Not by much. Right, not by much at all. A kind of an easier schedule. I mean, they get pretty much got the same schedule. I mean, as long as you can keep the gap you got, you're good. Oh, by the way, Ottawa is winning in the third right now. <laughs> Calgary. Um, so like I said, they got Tampa twice. Nashville's done with Tampa. And we lit them up the last time we played them. Right. So personally, I mean, realistically, just looking at the schedule um, and how teams are playing, Nashville's got to end the month. Uh, they play Chicago the next two games. And then you got Florida twice. I mean, you're probably going to squeak one out against Florida. You'll probably right. get one of the two against the Blackhawks. Um, you hope to squeak the one out against Dallas. If not, you're hoping to get both against Columbus. Right. Uh, you get both against Columbus. Dallas has still got that hectic schedule. I mean, looking at it, Dallas plays four times this week. And then they play four times next week. And then they play, uh, they also play Saturday that week. So they play Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, then play Friday, Saturday. Then they play again on Monday. They play Tuesday, and then they're off. They play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they play Monday again. So that's Dallas's schedule. Nashville's got. Um, Monday, Tuesday, that they could rest for three days and play Chicago. Right. And then you got Columbus Monday and Wednesday, Carolina Saturday, and then Monday. I mean, you got a lot of rest in there for the Nashville. So, I mean, the one thing I get worried about when you have those rest periods, you know, of almost three days or two days, that are they going to be game ready? Right. right. You know, you can scrimmage as much as you want, but you're, are you going to be game ready? Um, so, with that being said, Nashville's all-time record against... Uh, The record this season against our division is hang on. All 
right, so Nashville's all-time record against Carolina is uh, 15-17-1. Oh, 15, 17, 1 and 4. Columbus is 62, 21, 1 and 7. They have 163 points all time against them. Uh, Chicago, they're 58, 54 and 10, 130 points with a winning percentage. Uh, Detroit, a little lower, but remember, Detroit had that dynasty. Right. Um, they have a winning record against Tampa Bay. Florida Panthers, where are you? And the Florida Panthers, they are 16, 17, 3, and 2. So, but uh, this year. All right, so um, this year, the National Predators versus, my God, because I could do this. I can, if I can remember, we know versus the Blackhawks, they have not um, yet. Um, According to uh, all right, against the Panthers, the Predators are this season their record. Is they not keep track here? No, they didn't. So I'm just gonna have to do it myself. All right. Oh. One and one, one and two, one and three, one and four, two and four, two and five. So they got two games left. And I mean, if you can squeak out one, like I said, right, they're gonna be looking okay. Yep. Um, if you could get Forsberg or Tolvin in by that time, you'll be looking even better. Yeah. Um, with that being said, Nashville doesn't look like they're gonna climb out of the bottom of the rank there, and I have absolutely no clue how they plan on doing playoffs. I have no clue what the playoff format's looking like. Right. Is it possible I could look at the playoff format? All right. Yeek. All right, this is how we're going to do the playoffs. One versus four, two versus three. All right, with that being said, All right, so then the semifinal rounds. This is going to be weird. All right, so you're going to have the one seed 
Whoever's the highest seed playing whoever's the lowest seed, doesn't matter conference, division, or where you're from. Okay. Uh, and the two and three playing each other. Okay. So, as it sits right now, just in your divisions, you'd have Colorado, Arizona, Vegas, Minnesota. You'd have Carolina, Nashville, Florida, Tampa Bay. Washington versus Boston and New York versus Pittsburgh. New York Islanders versus Pittsburgh. Toronto versus Montreal. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Versus yeah. Winnipeg and Edmonton. Another good one. Um, so that'll be your matchups. Say Toronto beats Montreal, Winnipeg, or Winnipeg beats Edmonton. All right. So you got your one and two there. So they got 50, 61, and 52. So then say Montreal. Or Washington beats Boston, but Pittsburgh will beat New York. So then you got 59. So then you'd have, say, Nashville or Carolina beats Nashville because we all know it's going to happen. Um, right. And Florida taking uh, Florida beating Tampa Bay. It would be quite awkward when you would have Colorado beating Arizona and Vegas beating Minnesota. So the top two would be. All right. This is how this would turn out. You would have Toronto taking on Pittsburgh. And you'd have, wait, you'd have Toronto taking on Yeah. You'd have Toronto taking on Yeah, Pittsburgh. And then you'd have Winnipeg versus Washington. And then you'd have Carolina versus Florida. Then you have Vegas versus Colorado. It'd be actually kind of weird. Yeah. Um, so that's for the two, first two divisions. After that, once you get to the semifinal, it no longer matters. Okay. Then it'll be the East versus the North. They have the Central versus the West. Okay. That's how that's looking. I mean, things can change. We don't right. know much beyond that. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, to be honest, if you really look at it, if we have to play Carolina, it wouldn't really be that bad, though. I mean, you think about it. Carolina, if they do beat us two more times and we still get in, they're going to come in with, well, we don't have right. to where I beat these guys. And that's when the team hurts you. If yeah. That attitude, they're going to get stomped. Nashville gets stomped in the second round, but, I mean, at what point, kind of, do you wish to miss the playoffs? Because <laughs> do you really uh, want to play Carolina? Or do you want to play, well, that's the other part. There's enough games left where, and it's so close over there, where you could end up playing Tampa, or you could end up playing Florida, or, you know. Right. It all depends on how that all rolls. I mean, Florida, fortunately for them, Florida's got two against Dow Detroit. Two against Chicago, a four-game series against um, uh, Columbus, and then right. Tampa. I mean, out of that, they're pretty much going to win probably six games. I mean, outside of that, Carolina's got two against uh, the Panthers, two and four against the Lightning. Not right. good for them. You know, the Lightning are going to come back. I hope 
with a little bit of a vengeance. Uh, Kucherov, from what I do know, is close to his return. Okay. That being said, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. And I said Hockey Locker. Talk to y'all later. See y'all Wednesday.